Okay, now we're going to talk about tax smoothing with complete and incomplete markets. So you might ask yourself, is this going to be a new topic or not? And uh, the answer is it is and isn't. So um, we're going to um, use a trick to uh, kind of double our money. Um, we're going to recycle um, things we did before. So again, I'm using a, a Jupyter notebook based on a quantine lecture, quantine lecture, which you can get. Okay, so here goes. So, um, so we're going to describe two types of tax smoothing models. And these are going to be counterparts to consumption smoothing models that we talked about, you know, in the previous section of this lecture. So one's going to be in the complete markets tradition of Lucas and Stokey. And the second is going to be in the incomplete markets tradition of Hall and Barrow. Um, and um, we're going to stick very close to the, uh, to the, to the Barrow model. Um, give a faithful rendition. We're going, because Barrow made the assumption that the risk-free interest rate was constant and that it was equal to the, the gross interest rate was equal to the reciprocal of the, of the discount factor. Um, we're gonna make a homemade version of a Lucas Stokey model in which we throw the baby out of the, with the bathwater in a sense, um, that I'll describe later. And we're gonna assume that, um, Arrow secure one period arrow security prices uh, prices are exogenous and they're given and they're given in a way that is designed to keep the model as close as possible to barrel, except we're going to have complete markets. So here's the deal: complete markets are going to allow a government to buy or sell claims on arrow securities. Incomplete markets can allow the government to buy or sell only a very limited set of securities, and it's gonna be a single risk-free security. So that's what Barrow assumed in his 1979 paper, his famous paper. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna exploit that uh, identity of structure or an isomorphism between Barrow's model and Hall's model that we already saw. So Barrow's going to assume that just as Hall assumed that non-financial income was a, an exogenous process, um, and in our rendition it was, follow, it was generated by a, uh, a Markov process, Barrow is going to um, assume that government expenditures are exogenous and governed by a, a, a Markov process. Um, so the punchline here is to get to get Barrow's model from Hall's. All we have to do is rename variables. Literally, we use exactly the same code. Um, so another thing we're going to do is we're going to take a a Lucas Stokey version of, of the model, what we call it, by, by activating complete markets. Um, and again, we're going to rename vari variables. So here's the isomorphism I profit, promised. Um, isomorphism means same structure. So, um, and, and, and this is what Barrow, what Barrow exploited. Uh, Barrow's 1979 paper, I think, came a year after Hall's 19. 78 paper on consumption. It's no coincidence. Um, uh, although the way it was written, it didn't completely bring out the isomorphism, but it was lurking there. So, so in terms of what we did earlier, uh, for each of those two versions of the consumption smoothing model, we can get a tax smoothing model simply by, by doing the following. We're going to relabel consumption as tax collections. 
We're going to relabel a consumer's one period utility function as a government's one period loss function from collecting taxes that impose deadweight welfare losses. So, you know, maybe it's pretentious, but we're going to say that that one period loss function is the indirect loss function from a, from a deeper analysis that shows how that somehow if you raise the total amount of taxes you collect, you're going to you're going to impose more distortions and the distortions are going to are going to be quadratic in the level of taxes that's a key thing or increasing in a in a convex way is a function of the of the taxes we're going to relabel a consumer's non-financial income as a government's purchases and we're going to relabel government debt uh, i'm sorry the consumer's debt as a government's assets I'm going to flip the sign there. That's it. So everything is here. Consumption is going to be tax collection. The one period utility function is going to be a, a one period loss function. Of course, max and min are going to be exchanged. We're going to relabel uh, non financial income of the consumer as government purchases, and government consumer debt is going to be covered government assets. So, so that's going to be it. Um, so, so here's some, what was CT, we're going to call it capital T, what was G, uh, what was, what was, uh, I flipped these around, what was YT, we're going to call it GT, what was BT, we're going to call minus AT. And that's where we're going. Okay. So, um, actually, just this, uh, this is a remark. It turns out Barrow's model, which is very famous, it was actually anticipated by, well, a number of policymakers before who were advocating tax moving. Um, the, uh, some people say he founded NYU. Um, Albert Gallatin, when he was Secretary of Treasury for, for Jefferson, he, in, his, in his annual report in 1807, he, he described prescriptions that were exactly would come from Barrows. Okay, so, and, and Gallatin was concerned with the question that's front and center in the Barrow model, which is how should the government pay for a war? How do you pay for a war? And, Taking the currents of war or peace is exogenous. Okay, so now I don't have to. I don't have to say very much. Um, so, um, so this lecture has some revisiting of the of the tax moving model. It shows you shows exactly the same graph that we had before. Um, remember, this was. Uh, over here on the left, there's a, there's a, there's a, the green is the income process, non-financial income. And it's, this was the two state Markov case. It's bouncing up and down. Um, like this looks like a kind of a long uh, period of high income. Um, with complete markets, we had complete smoothing. And with the incomplete markets, we had the, uh, the drift, consumption followed a random walk. And here's the debt pass. With complete markets, um, there were two levels of debt corresponding to two Markov chains states. If we had N Markov chain states, there would be N possible levels of debt. Um, the, uh, the, uh, and again, here's our income. Okay, so so we just relabel things and look. I just this is these are exactly the same graphs. I just relabeled them. So now what's happening is uh, these are tax collection paths, and the green thing is now government expenditures. That's high, low, high, low. Here we here's high government expenditures, and look what's happening to taxes here. Uh, during the war, they we can think of this as a war. They're slowly going up. During peacetime, they go down. Um, so, um, 
uh, that's with incomplete markets. With complete markets, they're totally flat. And here's the government asset pass. Um, so, um, so with um, this, this, what was government? What was the household's debt is now the um, the government's assets. And you notice during this period of high government expenditures, the government's assets are being drawn down um, with the incomplete markets. So I'm just invoking that um, isomorphism. That's where we're, that's where we're going to go. Um, so. And then here's our analysis of taxation with uh, tax moving with complete markets. Um, and again, this looks just like what we had before, but now this is the government budget constraint. That says taxes plus aero securities that you purchase and are coming due, so there's your assets, have to be equal to government expenditures and state I plus, and what is this? That's the amount of one period ahead, aero securities the government's buying in state I. So J refers to tomorrow, QIJ, those are aero securities prices. And we're gonna impose that, just as we did before, these aero security prices are beta times the transition probabilities. And again, we did that because we wanna have a counterpart of a, a, a risk-free interest rate that's equal to the gross interest rate that's equal to reciprocal discount factor. Why do we want that? Is we, we want to reverse engineer this complete tax smoothing. So you want tax smoothing? Well, taxes are totally smooth here with complete markets there, constant over time. And how would we compute them? Um, well, using exactly the algorithm that we did in, the, in, in a little earlier today. Um, okay, so here's another way to, um, I'm just going to rewrite the government budget constraint in Markov state I. Tax collections in I, what the government taxes, uh, what the government spends, public's going to have to pay for. So what does the government spend? Those are the exogenous government expenditures. And what's this? That's the amount that the government spending on aero securities, and this is the amount it's getting in payoff of government securities from last period. So these are net purchases of uh, aero securities, um, and that has to be covered by taxes. Um, so a final thing is, um, so, so there's a economic history project um, led by George Hall of Brandeis, who's basically using these two models, literally these two models, to interpret um, episodes in US fiscal, fiscal history around the, uh, the wars that the US fought and how they were financed. Um, and you know, it's kind of contending models where it was the, uh, the barrel model with uh, Incomplete markets, uh, the right one, or was was there some a action of the uh, of the aspect of the uh, aero securities market going on, where the government was actually issuing risky securities? Um, they were somehow um, they were somehow imitating um, a vector of aero securities. I'll come back to that. So one thing one thing the Hall wants to compute is he wants to compute the returns what's the ex post return, what's the ex post return on a portfolio of uh, aero securities that the government is, um, in this case, buying. Um, if, it's, if it's issuing a bunch, um, same form is gonna apply. So, in the, so what's it buying? So in, in, in state I, the denominator, that, that's the package that it's, it's buying, it's buying insurance. Um, and kind of um, what's the payoff, what the, what's the return ex post payoffs? So that's what it spent. Um, 
almost all of those securities are going to be out of the money. They're not going to pay off when J actually occurs next period. Um, so the ex post return is going to be BJ over this. So you can so you get a formula for the return. And George Hall actually computes ex post returns on, on U.S. government debt. And um, it has, there's been periods when it's looked pretty constant, but there's actually periods during, during wars when it's, when it's, um, it hasn't been constant. Um, and, you know, his, his insight is going to be that, well, maybe the um, first way to think about that is a, um, a model like this where the, um, the government's um, issuing state, con state contingent securities and everybody knows it. Your return is going to be different depending on whether the government wins the war or loses the war. Um, and then you could just cascade these. This this is this this form is for the finite state Markov case. Uh, you could cascade these and get cumulated returns over t periods, which of course are going to depend on the evolution of the Markov state. Um, if you kind of look at this formula, it looks like, you know, this thing kind of looks like a joint density, and this looks like a product of a bunch of conditional densities. Um, if you look at. Um, Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, so then, what the rest of this lecture is? It's going to be some examples of uh, of uh, tax moving, um, primarily in the in the Markov case. Um, so. So here's going to be a, a situation where there's, um, we're going to have peace and low government expenditures in Markov State 1 and war and high government expenditures in Markov State 2. That's going to kind of be the vision. And, um, and then we're going to use our code just to um, watch what happens. And then, um, and then here we're actually going to feed in we're going to feed in a, a sequence. Uh, we're going to assume the initial Markov states one. We're going to start from peace. And then the government's going to experience three periods of war and come back to peace. So the Markov states are going to be peace, war, 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 peace. And we're doing this for a particular uh, setting of parameter values. So there's my Markov chain, little Python. It's 0 0.8, 0 0.2. So if you're in peace, you're probably going to stay in peace. But there's a 20% chance of going to war. If you're in war, 60% uh, chance it's going to endure. 40% chance you're going to go back to peace. Um, we're just going to compute optimal tax moving and government debt policies um, in this environment. Um, you know, we're setting a beta of 0.96. There's our arrow securities right there. Um, here's how we're going to compute things. Uh, just call this this Python program right here. Um, which notice we're computing optimal taxation, but we're using we're using the consumption uh, code. Um, and then uh, so this we're just going to see what's going to happen. We're going to compute a bunch of stuff. Um, so um, oops. Um, so when we did this, we printed out a bunch of stuff. Um, there's our aero securities prices. Um, here's our government expenditures. In uh, government expenditures, we made this up in peace and war, one and two. During war, government expenditures doubles. What we compute is tax collections are, with, with these uh, parameters, tax collections are gonna be 1.27 all the time. Our government debts, um, we're going to start the government off with some um, some um, some 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 assets, um, and then so what's going to happen is the government's going to it's going to um, it's going to it's going to buy insurance from the private sector. When when you're in peace, it's going to buy insurance from the private sector 
in the sense of it's going to purchase aero securities that are going to pay off if there's a war. Which means um, if there's no war, the people who sold the government those securities are going to are going to do quite well. They're going to get high returns. But if there's a war, people who bought those who who sold those securities are going to have to pay off, and they're going to get low returns. That's the idea. So we compute all these things here, and you can you can study what happens. Um, we check government budget constraints. So um, and there's a lot we can do with this. Okay, so so if you kind of analyze this, this is an example in which during peacetime, the government purchased insurance against the possibility that war breaks out. During the war, the government purchases more insurance. Um, the return on insurance against war is, long as, is low as long as peace continues. And then the opposite happens when war breaks out. Okay, and then, um, well, we have exercises. And then what we do is, um, this is actually motivated by some questions George Hall asked. We're gonna give um, more examples of, of tax moving um, by enriching what the Markov chain is. So, um, so I compute some more things. Um, so like like here's a here's a process here's a process where it goes like this um, here's government expenditures are going to be um, and this is designed to mimic some u s history um, you know if you kind of look at that like um, before the Civil War and you look at before World War one the United States in kind of both periods um, you see the following thing. Um, government expenditures, you go into the war, government expenditures are kind of low. Um, so that's, that's gonna be a pre-war period. Uh, that's the first Markov state. Uh, so, he, so here's our Markov chain. Your states one, two, and three, and look at the transitions. That you're, you're heading north, if you will. Um, some probability, this is gonna be peace. So probably a lambda that you switch to war. Once you go into war, you're never gonna go back to this peace episode. You're gonna go back to a different kind of peace, probability phi. Once you get to this new peace, it's gonna be high, it's, it's gonna be, uh, it lasts forever, just making this up. But what's gonna happen is uh, government expenditures are gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna be low here, they're gonna be very high here. They're gonna come down here, but they're gonna be higher than they were in the initial. So this is gonna be a, a situation where, um, well, we could see this. Um, here's, here's government expenditures. Um, you get into a war, you go way up, the war ends, you come down and you stay here forever. And then here's the two kinds of ways to, um, to finance this with, with uh, there's tax collection payouts. With complete markets, taxes are totally flat. They look like that. Um, with incomplete markets, uh, they look like this. Uh, they start, they, for, for technical reasons, they start at exactly the same level, and then they go down here. They're sliding down. Um, and then um, what's happening is um, the war breaks out, and now um, there's a jump in tax collections immediately, and then during the war, taxes keep sliding up, and then after the war, they drop down, and now they stay constant forever. And what's happening there is the government is is just it's it's rolling over the debt, and it's it's just uh, set a tax level that's just sufficient. You could check this from our equations to um, keep the the debt level constant. And if you check the debt pass, um, here's government expenditures again. They come down. Um, so, so what happens is um, there's going to be the the yellow is is the level of debts. Um, so those are those B's that we had. Um, there's going to be three values: the state contingent securities. Um, the um, the red is the um, 
is the amount that the government's spending to purchase um, state contingent securities tomorrow. With incomplete markets, you can see what happens is during peacetime, um, what the government's doing is, uh, this is the value of the government's debts, so it's minus government assets. During peacetime, the government's kind of building up a war chest. Okay, and then after, when war breaks out, it starts running down its war chest, and then here it, um, it rolls it over. So, so these bear lots of, uh, and then we calculated cumulative return pattern patterns on the government debt. Okay, this is a machine for teaching yourself about the way this very simple version of the quote unquote arrow, uh, barrel model and the Lucas uh, Stokey model go. And um, these are either stark versions. Um, so you'll see there's more experiments that are being done here. There's more examples. Um, so, so, so here, this is a different example where there's a, um, well, I'll come, I'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. So, you could read these examples if you want. Um, we could do these all day long. Um, it's kind of up to you. Um, they help you learn to. Um, and then we have a tax smoothing interpretation. The same isomorphism can be used for the for the. Um, the tax smoothing model where we have a continuous state Gaussian model. Same trick as before with the isomorphism. And um, some of the formulas are neat because um, in terms of what the, um, in terms of what the formulas for the value, see this is a formula for the value of next periods. Um, um, Yeah, there's a typo here. There should be a beta right here. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So here I wanna, I wanna, um, I wanna talk about um, how this relates to um, the real version of the Lucas and Stokey model. Okay. So the key thing is here is you could think of this as a quote unquote very special small open economy version of a Lucas and Stokey model. The barrel model is automatically a small open economy model. So here's how the, what Lucas and Stokey actually did is they wanted to have a, a closed economy um, in which the government, because it's a significant presence in the economy, when it changes taxes, um, they want to drill down underneath this loss function. And they're not going to bluff their way with uh, made up uh, government preference functions as, it, as, as, is, as, 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 as Barrow just started with. They're going to start with a representative consumer. They're going to have a benevolent government. You have a competitive equilibrium, and they're going to have asset prices, interest rates, and if there's they had error securities. Error security prices are going to depend on what the government policy is. Well, that means um, when the government chooses its taxation and borrowing strategy, it's influencing the prices of its own debt. So that what that means is if you write down a Ramsey problem where you have a benevolent government wanting to do the best for its citizens and it has the capability to commit, it's going to be taking into account that it can manip it indirectly manipulates securities prices in order to, um, as part of its design of taxation and borrowing product. So we completely excluded that. 
Um, and that's what I meant. We toss the baby out with the bathwater. Um, so what we're going to do in there's a couple of subsequent Quanticon lectures um, or topics. One is um, let's let's roll up our sleeves and look at exactly what Lucas and Stokey did. Um, so um, so there's a lecture that does this. Um, we do it in a couple stats. Um, so there's a there's a lecture on. Um, optimal taxation with state contingent debt. And then there's another lecture on, um, yeah. So then both of those, we have two lectures on optimal taxation with state contingent debt. And that's, that's a version, those are versions of the Lucas Stokey model, capture many features of their model. And then again, I say the whole thing there is, Error security prices are not taken as given. Um, the logic behind tax smoothing is um, the force that Barrow identified is still there, but there's other things going on too. And then you could kind of ask, well, that's where Lucas and Stokey stopped. And then you could kind of ask, well, suppose you want to redo Lucas and Stokey, but you want to do incomplete markets. So how would you do that? So. There's another quantity conduction about that. And um, we might talk about that, those things on another occasion.